So as Sherry uh, mentioned, I'm uh, a student in the maternal child health department as well as a pediatrician in Fresno. Um, and in my practice, we see staggering rates of child premature birth as well as teen pregnancy. So naturally for my thesis project, I wanted to explore the relationship between these issues. So first, preterm delivery is defined as delivery before 37 weeks gestation. It's a huge problem affecting one in 10 infants in this country um, and uh, causes death perinatally um, at a high rate as well. Those who survive have lifelong morbidity, many of them, and in general, this costs, costs a lot to the healthcare system, as you can imagine. As for pre-pregnancy BMI, it's kind of a snapshot of the mother's health um, before conception. So I looked at the, uh, in the literature, the relationship between pre-pregnancy BMI and preterm birth. Underweight BMI is, in fact, associated with preterm delivery. Some studies show the risk pathway as being associated with a poor diet, decreasing the blood flow to the uterus, leading to infections, and thus increasing the risk for preterm delivery. However, overweight and obese BMI has an inconsistent relationship with preterm delivery. The risk pathway suggests that obesity is associated with chronic disease, causing inflammation throughout the body, and leading to preterm delivery. However, a few papers suggest that obesity is protective, can, uh, suggesting that these women have a tendency for a longer cervix that protects them against preterm delivery. So why am I looking at pre, uh, teen pregnancy? Um, it's well known that teen pregnancy is associated with preterm delivery, so they are a natural vulnerable <coughs> population. And I specifically focus on Mexican-American teenagers because they have both high rates of overweight and obesity, as well as some of the highest rates for teen pregnancy among minority teens. So what does the literature show about this relationship in teenagers? Just like in adults, underweight BMI is associated with an increased risk for preterm delivery. However, there is a, a different pathway that's suggested. Um, the pathway suggests that there is a competition between the metabolic demand of both the teen mother and the fetus, resulting in increased preterm delivery. However, along the same lines, um, a high BMI is actually protective, suggesting that this extra weight provides sufficient energy for both the teen and fetus's metabolic demand, resulting in fewer preterm deliveries. I wanted to go a step further and see if this relationship varied among teenage age groups. So the prior literature shows that uh, older teens' risk for birth outcomes actually mirrors that of adults. However, middle school age teen moms have increased risk for poor birth outcomes. So perhaps the relationship between pre-pregnancy BMI and preterm delivery varies among early, middle, and older Mexican-American adolescents compared to older adolescents. I hypothesize that low BMI would be associated with preterm delivery in both middle and early adolescents, but high BMI would have a risk effect for preterm delivery in middle adolescents, but protective for early adolescents. This question is particularly important as it would inform preventative efforts and preconceptual care, specifically in weight management and chronic disease management in teen minorities. So for my study, I used uh, the CDC 2014 natality uh, birth certificate data. This includes all live births in the US. As you can imagine, that's a really large sample size and is very current as well. In fact, we started off with almost 4 million women, um, narrowed down to Hispanics, then specifically Mexican Americans, then to teenagers, limited our data set to primiparous mothers, with a final sample of 42,459 women, or teenagers, I should say. So uh, for my main exposure, I looked at pre-pregnancy BMI 
using the well-established categories of underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. My main outcome was preterm delivery dichotomously, but I further broke that down into late as well as moderate early preterm delivery. For covariates, I wanted to control for nativity as a marker for acculturation, marital status as a, uh, as a support marker, and as well as some socioeconomic markers and maternal medical risk factors. For my data analysis, I mainly performed a multiple logistic regression model adjusting for the aforementioned covariates as well as performed an interaction test for age. So my, out of my in, uh, entire study population, the average study subject was, as you can imagine, an older adolescent of normal weight that gave birth at term delivery, utilized Medicaid as well as WIC, was born within the US, unmarried, without health issues. When I looked at descriptive statistics uh, according to BMI, pre-pregnancy BMI, the typical subject that was underweight tended to be younger, born outside the US, as well as unmarried, whereas the typical subject that was overweight tended to be older, married, a WIC and Medicaid cl client, as well as uh, higher rates of diabetes and hypertension. <clears throat> For uh, my descript descriptive statistics uh, per preterm delivery, the main outcome, we found that preterm delivery increases with younger age, which is well known in the literature. Teens who delivered preterm tended to be non-Medicaid, non-WIC clients, as well as have medical health issues. When I performed interaction testing, it turns out the relationship between pre-pregnancy BMI and preterm delivery does not vary with age. In fact, the relationship between pre-pregnancy BMI and preterm delivery persisted across all teenage groups, teenage age subgroups. So on my logistic regression, as you can see, um, underweight BMI is associated with increased risk for preterm delivery and this, is this a police or oh, what is it? Um, and this persists for all gestational age groups, including moderate early as well as late preterm. Overweight and obesity actually was protective for preterm delivery. The risk for overweight women was concentrated in late preterm delivery, and the risk for obese women concentrated in moderate early preterm delivery. So in the end, my results did not support my hypothesis that the relationship varies all across age groups, but it does show that the relationship is different from that of adults. Underweight BMI is a risk factor for preterm delivery in teenagers, but overweight obesity BMI tends to be protective. This relationship persists for both late and moderate early preterm delivery and persists when adjusting for covariates of support markers, socioeconomic factors, nativity, and maternal medical risk factors. Even though this was a really large data set, there were some limitations. First of all, we dropped any subjects that had any missing data, so that would result in some selection bias. The data set itself, birth certificate data, has very limited information. Um, BMI itself is based off of self-reported weight by the mother, so there's potential for misclassification there. And BMI is reported in BMI categories, which is what's recommended, the recommended measurement by the CDC for adults, but the CDC actually recommends looking at BMI percentiles for children, which is not reported on birth certificate data. In addition, gestational age is reported as a best obstetric estimate, which is loosely based off of ultrasound dating as well as last menstrual period, but last menstrual period can be fairly unreliable, so there's possible um, misclass misclassification there as well. So in the end, um, 
My findings can encourage weight gain into normal BMI categories for preconceptual pre care of Mexican American teenagers. <laughs> Also, our findings suggest that perhaps birth certificate data should start including BMI percentiles instead of categories, especially since teen pregnancy rates are persistently high in minority teenagers. Next steps would include replicating this study in non-Mexican populations. And thank you. I just wanted to say I, I also work with this data and I just wanted to let you know um, they actually report the mother's weight in kilograms as well as her height. And so if you were feeling adventurous and brave, you could uh, code the percentiles yourself if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure that information is available. Great next steps. <laughs> Thank you. And pregnancy report considered whether you should use teenage, you should use uh, what you should use to to classify teenagers, and they kind of backed off from having to use the, the um, growth standards. So you can argue it either way, but looking at it both ways might be interesting. about BMI and how valuable is BMI as a measurement. Can you, can you know, as you think about your data and that uh, recent conversation and kind of the literature, at least in the media, could you just speak to that? Well, <laughs> um, as a practitioner, I, I'll say that we still heavily rely on BMI. Um, as a pediatrician, we use BMI percentile at every visit for children. Um, so it'll be interesting to follow this discussion in the, in the field. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the differences that you found in the sample that you were looking at in terms of teens versus adults in the general population and what those differences were and what about them is most meaningful? That's a great question. Um, I don't have the data with me, but I did perform, um, for my own knowledge, <laughs> um, a, a logistic regression for 20 to 30 year olds. And that relationship actually showed that both underweight and overweight and obese, basically any BMI that was not normal, um, was associated with increased risk for preterm delivery um, in that adult group. So, it really is a huge difference um, compared to the teenagers for which underweight was a risk factor but overweight obesity was protective. So it really starts the discussion about um, for adult women, we really want to encourage everyone into the normal weight category. Um, but for teenagers, maybe we need to look at that differently. Question. Can I suggest that when you submit this for publication, you include those data? Because I think it makes a far more compelling argument to say in the same data set you're seeing these differences and why it may be okay to be, whether it's fat and fit or just fat and young <laughs> or whatever, um, and, and talk about some of those things. Because maybe if you have prediabetes but you're not full, like some of the risk factors as you age, and you could even go to weathering if you wanted to or whatever. but. Um, I think it makes a much more interesting paper. Great suggestion. Thank you. Yes. But if you do that, you should probably look at obesity classes since mm -hmm. you have enough data right. because it may be that you've got a lot of, of um, mildly obese teenagers mm -hmm. um, and that if you look at grade three obesity, you see the same kind of problems we see with adults. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a great project. <laughs> Maybe you want to talk a little bit about uh, the pathways uh, that you think might be different for teens than adults. It could be very informative. 
So I um, spoke a little about this in the beginning of my talk, that the suggested pathways are really different for uh, uh, adults versus um, teenagers. <clears throat> for teen, uh, for, here we go, for adults, um, it, uh, there really is, uh, um, <clears throat> the risk factor is based off of um, inflammation, chronic disease, um, and that effect on preterm delivery. Whereas in adolescence, the, path, the suggested pathways really focus on that metabolic demand. The teenager, the adolescent, is a growing, developing being and that is suddenly put into competition with a growing fetus. Um, so it's a very different pathway, and I, I did want to focus on that for my study, but I, I agree it would be an interesting question to com uh, compare to adults. Yes. Hi, Sonia. Thank you. Um, so my question is, with the covariates you mentioned, I remember you mentioned nativity and as a marker of acculturation. Was that also supposed to be a marker of social support? Or did you, was that a covariate? I mean, looking specifically at Mexican-American teens, um, I would maybe hypothesize that that would be a, a different effect than if we were to look at Caucasian teens or kind of different social support in different eth ethnic groups. So I was wondering if you could speak a bit to that or if that was in your thought process at all. Sure. Um, in conceptualizing my hypothesis, I certainly really thought about the different aspects of acculturation. Unfortunately, the birth certificate data offers really limited information. I would have loved to get information on how long they've lived in the US you know, what kind of community support they have, other social factors related to their culture, but unfortunately it's not available <laughs> in birth certificate data. Um, uh, as for uh, the marker for support, the only thing I had was marital status, which, as you can imagine, isn't really relevant in a teenage group. It would have been more rich to, to hear about if they were living at home with their parents and supported by their family or a circle of friends or a group home. Um, that would have added some really rich information. Yes. Sorry, just one more thing. So if you're going to be working on this to publish, you might consider using in addition to marital status. They have um, whether or not the father was on record on the birth certificate, which I think kind of starts to get at this marker for social support, whether or not the mother was willing to actually say who the father was. Yeah. And you might want to consider adjusting for height if you're looking at BMI, and especially with adolescents with height biasing it. Those. Very fair, thank you. Thank you very much.